How do we even begin teaching about the mystery, the central mystery of the Eucharist? That Jesus is truly present, not in symbol, but truly present in his body, blood, soul, and divinity at every single Catholic Mass. Well, what is the best reason to believe anything as Christians? We're Christians because we follow the Christ. We should ask ourselves, what did Jesus teach? What did the Christ teach about this? We should go to him first because that's the best reason to believe anything. Do you know that Jesus talked about the Eucharist in, in each one of the Gospels? It was recorded in every one of the Gospels. And in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we hear the institution narratives. That is, the narrative by which they told the moment that he instituted the Eucharist at the Last Supper and how important and, and monumental that, that feast was, that event was, the new Passover. But John, John the beloved disciple, he was the one who gave us the theology so that we would know today with, with firm faith and, and belief that it, it, it's not just a symbol. He taught us how Jesus taught his disciples and how he taught all the Jews that if they were going to follow them, that this was going to be the central mystery. He does so in John chapter six. If you open your Bible to John chapter six, you can pray with this, you can study this. But it's called the bread of life discourse because Jesus starts to speak about himself as the bread of life. He makes the comparison of, of how God provided for their ancestors, the Israelites, in the wilderness, in the desert. He provided them bread from heaven. They called that manna, right? This, this bread that came down from heaven, he provided for their needs. And, and in the beginning, the Jews were starting to understand and they were saying, oh yeah, we get it. Just like, just like our fathers ate that, that manna in the desert, so you are going to provide for our needs. Just as you've been going around and healing, right? You, you've been doing some of that healthcare ministry. Well, now you're also gonna feed us. If we continue to follow you, you'll take care of those needs too, you'll feed us. And Jesus is like, yes, but there's something more, right? I'm not just gonna feed you with bread. There's no more bread from heaven. There's, there's not gonna be raining down manna, right? I'm not just gonna continue to multiply loaves and fishes. There's a new bread. And that's what I want you to understand. So in order that they understand that he's not talking in, in figurative language, he starts to say this in John chapter six. He says, I am the living bread, which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread which I shall give for the life of the world is my flesh. Not figurative, right? And, and in case we, we still think that he's speaking figuratively, let's just look at the narratives. What did the Jews think who were listening to him? Did they think that he was speaking li figuratively? Well, it says that this immediately after Jesus says that his flesh is the true food. It says the Jews then started quarreling or disputing amongst themselves. How can he actually give us his flesh to eat? So the crowd that's listening to him actually knows he's not speaking figuratively, he's speaking literally. And just so that they know it, and just to drive that point home, Jesus then says this, he doesn't back off, he doubles down. He says, truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise him up at the last day. Is that figurative language? He doubles down again. He says this, for my flesh is food indeed. My blood is drink indeed. Not figurative, literal. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. He's explaining to them right now in John chapter six what he will later say the night before he dies when he prays to the Father. Father, I pray that they would be one in you and I, just as I am in you, that they would be in me. This is, this is what he wants for the life of the church. And how does he do that? How does he accomplish that? It's through the Eucharist that he will literally be one with us, in us. And when we eat his flesh and drink his blood, we will have eternal life. We will be one in him. Well, come on, maybe he is just speaking figuratively. Maybe it's not literal. Well, what does Jesus want? What do the disciples know that Jesus wants? He wants followers. He wants people who believe, those who are following him. Well, it says immediately after that, that all of those who are following him, they said, this is enough. We can't take this. We cannot believe in this. Maybe you're not the Messiah. So they walk away. They go away. It says that, that day, the thousands went home. And Jesus doesn't call them back. Can you imagine the disciples saying, look at all these people. They're, you had everything that you wanted. Everybody's following you. And it's as if Jesus is saying, if they don't, if they don't capture this, they can't follow me because this is the true teaching. This is what I came to institute. This is, and you guys have to understand that too. So he says this to his disciples. He looks at them, the apostles themselves. 
He says, will you go away too? Almost as if he's giving them the option. If you don't understand this, if you will go away, I will start over. I will have to start over again. This is how literal he means it. And he's willing to do that because this is such a monumental teaching. And then Peter says to that, to whom shall we go? You have the words of everlasting life. You know what I love about Peter's response? He doesn't say, oh yeah, I get it, I understand. We're gonna eat your flesh and drink your blood. No, they still don't understand. That's why it's okay that sometimes we have doubts and we have lack of faith. Sometimes we don't understand. But to that, Peter says, even though I don't understand, I do believe that you're the Messiah and I do trust in you. And if you say that it's true because you are the Christ and I'm gonna be a Christian, I'm gonna follow you. Even when I don't understand, I will follow you. You have the words of everlasting life. I've come to a point where at least I trust you enough to take you at your word. I will follow you. And then it all pays off because then we get to the institution narrative. The night before Jesus dies, he takes him to the last supper. He prepares it meticulously. When he gets there, he finally shows them that they're gonna eat a sacrament, right? His body and his blood will become present in the species of bread and wine. And he gives that to them and he says, this is my body. This is my blood. He doesn't stop there. Read in Luke's gospel. Do this in memory of me. Because now you understand this, because you stuck with me this entire time, you will do this in memory of me for the life of the church, for the life of the world. That we will always have the Eucharist present in our churches. This is what these men did. They carried on the teaching of the Christ.